This episode of Phone Buff is brought to you by lynda.com. Try lynda.com free for seven days by visiting lynda.com slash phone buff today. What's up guys, David here, and welcome back to yet another episode of Phone Buff Q&As, the show where you can ask me just about anything you want, related or unrelated to mobile technology, and where I get to ask you guys, that's right, you sitting down watching this video, a couple of weekly questions via polls on our Facebook fan page. You can be a part of the polls by liking us at facebook.com slash phone buff, and get your questions answered by asking us on Twitter at phone buff. I'll put all the links you need down below, but with that said, let's go ahead and get this show started. Arjit asks, Hey, what would you like more? More RAM on a phone or more cores? For example, 2-3 to three gigabytes of RAM with a dual core processor or 1-2 to two gigabytes of RAM with a quad core? Well, with the ranges you gave me, you actually made it a pretty easy choice, which would be 2 gigabytes of RAM with a quad core processor, but I'm pretty sure you're talking about the lower end of the range, so between a phone with 2 gigabytes of RAM but a dual core processor versus a phone with a quad core processor with just 1 gigabyte of RAM, my choice would be the phone with more RAM. I say this for a couple of reasons. For one, not every app out there is going to support those extra cores, so a lot of times they won't even be fully utilized. But second, and probably more importantly, I feel like the OS, which I'm assuming we're talking about Android here, does much better with multitasking and just running more smoothly in general when it has more RAM to work with. And this isn't just my opinion. Motorola, which is owned by Google, kind of surprised everybody with their flagship smartphone and the Moto X being shipped with just a dual core processor instead of a quad core, which has kind of become the standard nowadays. Yet, the Moto X still runs really smoothly despite having less cores, so I doubt the same could be said if it had shipped with just one gigabyte of RAM instead of two. Then Dyson asks, who do you think will make the Nexus 5? Okay, so speaking of Motorola, they're one of the two companies currently being rumored as the manufacturer of the next Nexus. The other company is LG, which happened to make the last Nexus smartphone in the Nexus 4. As far as which company between the two I think will eventually go on to make the Nexus 5, my money's on LG. I don't have any kind of inside information on this or anything, but historically speaking, Nexus smartphones have been made by the same manufacturer for two generations. I kind of go into this in my Nexus Evolution video, which if you haven't seen will be linked down in the description below, but in that video, I make the argument that the first Nexus smartphone was actually the G1, which technically isn't considered Nexus, but it had the same story as any Nexus we've ever seen in that it was running a stock version of Android, and maybe more importantly, it was designed with significant input from Google. Anyways, about a year after the G1, Google introduced us to the Nexus One, or the first real Nexus. What did the Nexus One have in common with the G1? Well, a lot actually, but the main thing here was that they were both made by the same company, which was HTC. After the Nexus One came the Nexus S, followed by the Galaxy Nexus a year later, and yep, you guessed it, both of those phones were made by the same company, which this time around was Samsung. And then you have the current Nexus and the Nexus 4 made by LG. Now, I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but I find it really interesting that LG is one of the two companies being rumored to make the Nexus 5 out of all the companies out there, given the pattern that we've seen so far. And that pattern, by the way, doesn't just exist with Nexus smartphones. It's with the Nexus tablets as well, with the first and second generation Nexus 7 being made by the same company in ASUS. Of course, this little theory of mine is just that, a theory, but if the next Nexus is made by LG and the Nexus 10 is made by Samsung, then we'll know that there's some kind of agreement going on where when a manufacturer signs on the Nexus program, they have two generations. Of course, right now rumors say that the Nexus 10 is going to be manufactured by ASUS next time around, so we'll have to wait and see. Johnny asks, what are your thoughts about the new iPhone being gold? I don't know, honestly. If the rumors are true and the iPhone 5S does come in a gold variant, I guess it'd be nice since having more options is always a good thing, but personally, I don't see myself ever rocking a gold iPhone, and I asked you guys on Twitter, and most of you said that you wouldn't either, but at the same time, I think Apple could have some success with it, considering that having an iPhone is almost like a fashion statement for a lot of people, with it being so popular and always showing up in TV shows and movies and all that stuff, so... I really don't know, but tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. Benj Atkinson asks, where can you get a lot of cool Android figures? Are you talking about these Android figures or maybe these ones? Well, you can actually get them in a number of places, but personally, I always get mine on Amazon. I buy those blind boxes where you don't know which one's coming in the mail, which is actually kind of addicting, but I'll go ahead and link it down there in the description for you. I asked you via phonebuff.com's weekly poll, would you want one big giveaway or multiple small giveaways? And right now, it's really, really close. When I checked the poll last night, doing a giveaway with one big prize like a smartphone or a tablet had the lead, 
And now doing a giveaway with multiple small prizes like Google or iTunes gift cards has a lead. So I'll leave this poll open for you guys to keep on voting in. So that way you can decide what the next phone buff giveaway will be like. The link to the poll is down in the description. All right, guys, that's it for me in this episode of Phone Buff Q&As. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And remember that this show runs off your questions and your votes. So be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and keep those questions coming. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.